Julius Caesar performed the incredible feat of conquering Gaul, and even the Bretons on their distant island fell to their knees before the Roman military power. Many years had passed since Caesar left his beloved Rome, and he longed to return to his birthplace. However, many things changed during his absence. One of his most important allies, the consul Marcus Crassus, had his legions defeated during the dismal Battle of Carrhae, where the Romans encountered the powerful army of the Parthian Empire. Marcus Crassus was an outstanding merchant and negotiator, but his skills as a military commander were not as sharp as those of Julius Caesar and Pompey. Crassus perished in that battle, and with that, the Triumvirate Alliance was broken, allowing General Pompey to take political control of Rome. The emerging famous and wealth of Julius Caesar deeply concerned General Pompey, who, right from the beginning, already had a great contempt for him. Without the presence of Marcus Crassus to support Julius Caesar and the Roman Senate, General Pompey no longer saw any reason to tolerate Caesar's existence and began to make serious accusations against him. Pompey claimed that Julius Caesar had extended his campaign in Gaul for too long, whose original deadline was just five years. Pompey knew this was not true. He had secretly met with Marcus Crassus and Julius Caesar to decide the city's politics, and in this meeting, they agreed to give Caesar five more years to conquer Gaul. Another accusation was that Julius had used the strength of the legions for his own benefit and made his fortune in the Roman Senate. Pompey issued an order to Julius Caesar. He would have to disband his legions and return to Rome, where he would face a trial in the Senate. At that time, there were few in the Senate with enough courage to oppose Pompey's demands. Julius knew that, if he abided by that order, his life would be over and everything would be lost. He then decided to march to Rome with his legions and demand respect, even if this had to be done by force. And so, in the year 49 BC, Julius Caesar and his legions were declared enemies of Rome in an event that has been recorded in history as the Second Civil War of the Roman Republic. Caesar was not concerned when the news reached him. He already knew about Pompey's aversion to him and a direct confrontation between the two was unavoidable. Julius Caesar found himself facing the sad reality that, in order to return home, he would have to attack his own city. Pompey was an experienced general and knew that Rome could not hold out long against the veteran legions of Gaul. He needed to amass more soldiers to defend the city, and to achieve this, he called in the legions that were serving in Greece and in the nearby territories and a race against time then started. Pompey anxiously awaited the arrival of more soldiers, while Caesar marched as fast as possible to reach Rome before Pompey's reinforcements. To make Caesar's situation worse, he had the Rubicon River in his bath. The Roman generals were expressly forbidden to cross the Rubicon with their legions on their way to Rome. Caesar knew that to cross the river meant no turning back path. In this context, Julius Caesar uttered one of his most renowned quotes, Alia jacht est, luck is cast. Crossing the river with his legions would take a massive amount of time, and Caesar did not have that. He decided to take his chances and move forward with only one legion in a forced march. The other legions would follow immediately behind at a slower pace, preserving their strength for the upcoming battle. Both captains experienced anguishing days, but Caesar's legions again proved their worth and arrived in Italy with remarkable speed. Seeing no other alternative, Pompey gathered his personal guard and, together with some senators and allies, left the city of Rome shortly before Caesar's arrival. Pompey headed for the Roman city of Brundisium, from where he embarked for Greece with the plan to meet with the local legions to set a counterattack against Julius Caesar. When Julius Caesar finally entered the city gates, the streets were basically deserted. The Roman citizens were unsure of Caesar's intentions. Perhaps he would return as a hero, or an alternative, as an enemy, seeking revenge for having been exiled from his city. But they had nothing to fear. Caesar did not allow his legionnaires to attack the population nor to plunder the city. When the weather in the city got milder, Caesar made a public speech, reassuring the population. 
he appointed one of his most trusted men to take charge of the city. The chosen one was Mark Antony, who had served with Julius in Gaul and proved himself as an excellent military commander. Caesar still had to wait some months to carry on with his persecution against Pompey. New boats had to be built to carry the legions across the sea. While the boats were being built, Caesar restored order to the city of Rome by passing new laws, electing new senators, and taking care of the city's financial affairs. Still waiting for the boats to be finished, Caesar went to Spain. There, he defeated Pompey's supporters, ensuring that Rome would not be attacked while he was heading for Greece. In 48 BC, Julius Caesar and Pompey finally fought their first conflict in the Battle of Dyrrhachium, which took place in a region in northwestern Greece. Much to Caesar's surprise, Pompey assembled a remarkable army of about 36,000 infantry soldiers and 7,000 knights. Julius Caesar feared that new reinforcements would arrive for Pompey. He decided to act quickly, setting up a fortified camp with only 22,000 men ready for the battle. The result was nothing short of disastrous for Caesar. Pompey attacked a weak point in the wooden wall that protected Caesar's camp, and the chaos spread quickly. With fewer soldiers and having his defenses compromised, Julius had no alternative but to order a total withdrawal. This defeat reminded Julius Caesar why Pompey the Great was one of the greatest generals of his time. He could not be underestimated again. Caesar retreated to a new camp, but had little food and drinking water for his men. With his provisions almost ending, Julius Caesar needed to act quickly. On August 9th, 48 BC, the Battle of Pharsalus was fought in the region of Thessaly in central Greece. The fight got off to a slow start, with both generals carefully studying the opponent's movements. A fight between two Roman armies, trained with the same formations and tactics, could not have a simple conclusion. The battle was extremely aggressive. Both sides attempted to outflank their opponents. Pompey benefited from a larger cavalry, but Caesar's veterans had already faced all sorts of challenges and could not be easily dominated. Even being at a great numerical disadvantage, Caesar's legions managed to withstand the enemy cavalry and outflank the infantry, gaining total control of the battle. Pompey saw his army being destroyed before his eyes. He understood that he was not facing an ordinary man. Pompey was defeated and had to withdraw as quickly as possible. After that defeat, General Pompey found himself in a dreadful situation. Most of the senators who had left with him for Greece were now fleeing to other Roman colonies. Some even went to meet Caesar, begging for forgiveness. Pompey fled to Egypt, which at the time was part of the territories ruled by Rome. He sought refuge among the Egyptian nobility, but he did not expect a cruel twist of fate. Some members of the Egyptian elite feared that if they protected Pompey, they would be enticing Caesar's fury, who was already heading towards Egypt. Pompey was attacked and killed as soon as he set foot on Egyptian soil, a great Roman general had found an unglorified end in foreign lands. When Julius Caesar arrived in Egypt, he was received at the royal palace of Ptolemy XIII. As soon as he asked about Pompey's whereabouts, only the remains of his former rival were handed to him. Caesar was enraged. He planned to forgive Pompey and bring him back to Rome. He would even allow him to occupy a seat in the Senate. The disrespect was even greater when considering that Pompey was a Roman consul and had been murdered cowardly by foreigners. It was too late for Pompey. Julius Caesar, now in Egypt, found himself a conspiracy target in the land of the pharaohs.